Okay, let me paint you a picture. You're shooting a video, it's cinematic, the lighting looks good, everything is coming together. So you go home, you drop it into DaVinci Resolve, and you're like, oh no, those lights are really flickery. It's okay, that was me. But thankfully, I'm happy to tell you that DaVinci Resolve is amazing. And today we're talking about how to remove flickering screens or any flickering lights from your video. Let's jump into DaVinci and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we have our clip here. Let's check it out and see what kind of flicker we're working with. I'm gonna loop it so it's gonna be like jittery. It's a pretty short clip. And as we can see, good looking shot, but I mean, look at that flickering screen. It really makes me not wanna use the shot at all unless I can fix the flicker. So let's talk about how we're doing that. So we need to jump over to the color tab. As you can see, I already have my color grade built out. Came from here to here. We're gonna come up to the first node, right click and do add a serial node before. In my experience, I want this deflicker effect to be the first in the chain and affecting the purest form of the footage that it can. So we'll come up to effects and we'll search deflicker and drag that right on, and we're given a few settings. So we'll come straight to this drop-down menu, click on Advanced Controls. There's a lot going on here, but honestly, I only pay attention to very few of them. The first one is frames either side. This is just like noise reduction, where it's asking you how many frames it wants you to analyze. So from my understanding, if you choose one frame, it might be a lower quality effect. It might make your video look soft or blurry, but it'll be a lot easier on your computer. And then if we jump up to five, generally it's the best you can get, but it's gonna be pretty heavy on your computer. Now that's not always a rule. I'll show you an example where I had it set to five and everything looked good except for the last frame of my video was still flickering. So I didn't know what to do. I just messed around and I set this to four, looked a little bit better and then set it on three. And I was like, oh, the screen looks great now. So if the deflicker isn't working for you how you want, Try messing around with this setting and see what you get. The next thing we're gonna jump to is restore original detail after deflicker. There's one shot in this video where it was just looking a little bit blurry. I'm guessing because there was a lot of motion in the video. So I came down here to detail to restore, bumped it all the way up and looked really good. Check out the differences between those two shots here. I'm gonna let this render out and we'll see how we're looking so far. And we still have a flicker. Why am I not upset about that? Because that is only step one in the process. We're gonna come back over to the color page. We're gonna add another node, add another deflicker effect, do similar settings. So I'll come down to advanced control. I'm gonna leave this one on three because of what I was saying earlier, five doesn't always work. And this was one of those specific shots. For this one, I'm not gonna turn up the detail to restore. You'll see why in just a second. So next we wanna come over and make a mask specifically around the screen that we're working with. In that case, you can think about these two effects as this being the overall deflicker. So it's deflickering the entire shot, and this could be the targeted deflicker. This node is only gonna deflicker what we have in this mask. Just because this is the screen that's flickering doesn't mean it's the only place in the composition that's flickering. This light is flickering all over this cup, all over his arm, so we need this overall deflicker to start handling that. And this targeted deflicker is very much a second layer of deflicker. I find it important to do this for two reasons. One, I don't want it bogging down my computer trying to double deflicker the entire shot. And two, since this screen is out of focus and blurry and I don't need the detail anyway, I can max out this second deflicker and it's not gonna affect my cup or anything that needs to be sharp like this spoon, the rim of the cup. It's gonna keep everything that needs to be sharp, sharp, but we don't need the screen to be sharp. It's literally a blurry screen. So let's work on that mask. We're gonna make this mask just around our screen. And then I'm gonna soften out all the edges and then I'm gonna up the size a little bit because again, that flicker is expanding beyond the screen. So I wanna make sure I capture at least a little bit around it. I'm actually gonna make sure that this is not going over my cup too much though. Next, let's come over to our tracker and track this bad boy. I have 3D turned off. It was just getting a little wonky for me and I don't necessarily need that plane of tracking for this shot. And quick trick, if you disable all of your grades by clicking this button or hitting Shift D, your tracking will go a little bit faster, especially when you have a pretty hefty grade like this one. Turn our grade back on and then I'm gonna let this render and we'll see again what we're twerking with. And it's looking pretty good. You can see this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. That last frame is still 
doing some kind of flickering. Let's see if we can find what frame that is. So this is looking really good, 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 good. All the way about up to that frame, you can see a change. Let's mess with that analyzing frame setting. Let's try setting it to three on our overall D flicker. I definitely think it helped a little bit, but it's not necessarily what I'm wanting it to look like still. I'm gonna turn this one back to five and let's set this one to five. It's just trial and error, jumping around, seeing what works best. So I got it looking pretty good, but then I realized similar to what I do with warp stabilization sometimes, if a certain frame is giving me trouble, I could just lose that frame, especially since it's at the end. I can just cut that frame, start the clip one frame earlier, and then we won't even have to worry about that one frame that did not want to stop flickering. One final thing you can do if you really can't get your screen to stop flickering or at least stop flickering enough is add another node after your targeted D flicker, copy this and paste it in literally third layer of deflickering. Again, you're gonna have to sit here and let your computer process it and it might give you some kind of mushy, blurry artifacts. So I think that this one really only works when your screen's already out of focus or your screen's not in the frame, you're just deflickering certain lights. But give it a try and see what works. So let's see what this final one looks like. Overall, deflickering, it's like using color grading to fix bad lighting or using warp stabilizer to fix shaky footage. The best thing to do is to not ever have the problem. You might not ever get it to look absolutely perfect. Quick tips, if you are shooting and you're getting flicker in your playback, try changing your shutter angle or your shutter speed. Generally what's happening is there's this weird mix between the refresh rate of the lights that are flickering and the shutter speed that you're using. So if you can get those to match up, then the flicker goes away or it'll at least be decrease. All right, y'all, that is all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you out. I hope it gets you out of a bind if you're dealing with some flicker. If you want to see this full video that I'm showing you as an example, you can check out last week's video. We recorded some pretty dope Foley sound effects to build out the sound design. If that sounds interesting to you, check it out. Hit subscribe, hit like, whatever button that you think is gonna help me grow on YouTube, hit that button and I appreciate it. If you're still watching, you're the freaking best. I'll see you in the next video.